So often, so often, I work with men, I work with, I work with people, I work with, we do a lot of one-on-ones with people. And thank you, buddy. And so often, I get these people that, that come to me and say, I'm addicted, but I want to be free, right? I've got this addiction and I just got to break through. I just, I just need a breakthrough. And I say, okay, well, let's, let's sit down and let's start working together. But see, we got to keep in our thoughts when they automatically tell you they're addicted, you got to expect them to act like an addict because that's what their mind keeps telling them. They're addicted. They're an addict. They're addicted. They're an addict, right? I have this teaching that I've, I've listened, I listened to it years ago. It's called the power of the cross. And in there, there's a story of a man actually kind of went right off of my notes, but there's a story of a man that goes to a psychologist and he sits down in the psychologist chair and he goes, I'm, I'm a little distraught today. And the, the, the psychologist looks at him and goes, why, what's going on in your life? What can I help you with today? And he goes, well, every time I go to the store, I'm drawn to the dog food. And he goes, I just want to spend my time in the dog food aisle. And the guy goes, tell me a little bit more. And he goes, oh, I really like the dog food. He goes, I like being the dog food aisle. And he goes, tell you the truth, I, I eat dog food. He goes, well, kind of adjusted himself and looked at him. He goes, what do you mean you, 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 you eat dog? How long have you been eating dog food? And he goes, ever since I was a puppy. So see, what the moral of the story is, is that as we think, we become. And we... <laughs> Uh, ain't there an ice cream out there called Skinny Cow? Yeah. <laughs> it's a famine of cream. But, but but what I'm getting at is is what where we let our minds go is where we become bound so often. See, in this ministry, we 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 work in we we work on the strongholds that we develop in life, and we'll go through life and have. I mean, she's still working on me. Because I have some strongholds that still come and haunt me on a weekly, daily basis. She keeps me cleaned up every week. She was like, that looks like a stronghold. Get in a hot seat. <laughs> but, the tru- <laughs> but the truth of the matter is we all can develop these kind of strongholds. These strongholds can be something as as simple as I can't break free from what this challenge is in my life. I can't mend my mind any around anything else. The enemy's got a hold of it. Um, I'm hearing more and more. I'm a targeted individual. I'm hearing more and more. I've got a chip in me from somebody. Somehow I got a chip in me and the government's controlling me. Them become strongholds in our minds. And we start believing them. We can tell ourselves a lie and believe it. If we tell it enough, we become become the lie. Um, I've got many cases I could tell you about from my years of work. People develop lies in their their testimony and in writing reports. And if you ain't careful, that report becomes total truth to them. And they forget the reality of what happened, right? We do the same thing right here. We write it on tablet of our mind and it comes into the tablet of our heart. The problem, what I find is it's much easier for us to take those strongholds and move them from our head to our heart than it is to take the love of God and move him from our head to our heart. It's much easier for that stronghold to grip us and choke us out and suck the life out of us and keep us held down and not allowing us to to accomplish what we have in life, what we're supposed to accomplish in life. 
because we're less than somebody else. Because that's what we say about ourselves. And that's where our minds go. Instead of going, I'm a creation. I, that old man died. That old man, when I, when I was baptized, that old man died. And I'm resurrected into a new man with a new heart and a new vision. Because I'm a dead man back there. Whatever God wants for this life is where we go. Right? Fresh life. We can mend our mind to do anything we want it to. We can use it for to be focused upon the Lord, or we can be focused upon the world. And I understand that sometimes we are bound there, and I believe that most bound minds can be unwound. Amen. Come on up. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for the, the work that's been done in this house. I thank you for the the messages that get preached here in this house that are strong and powerful, that move people out of bondage and into reality. Lord, I ask that your hand come upon this, this house tonight. I pray that you would anoint my wife's lips tonight to preach a message that penetrates the hearts of the hearers, God. I pray that each person that comes into this house tonight leaves a changed person. Leaves changed for you and you alone, Lord. Leave and they forget who we were, but they remember what you did. Father God, we pray that your, your spirit would hover and settle upon those that need help tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh, no.